Now on the surface of it, it might seem that the main point of a distillation lab is to do the distillation. But really the big point in the distillation is after you get that distillate at the end, the stuff you collect at the end of the distillation, is determine the molar concentration of it. And to do that, you've got to create a calibration curve. So don't forget when you're doing the distillation lab, the main point is to determine the molar concentration of that distillate at the end and use a calibration curve. Create a calibration curve to do that. It's important that you keep really good records whenever you're doing a lab. So find a new clean page in your lab logbook, put in the date and the title, and be prepared to write good observations, especially the measurements from any lab, this one included. If the teacher has made up the fermented sugar water for you, then you get what you need. You only need to fill the distilling pot about halfway. Make sure you always recover any container you get any kind of chemical or mixture from. If you're making up your own fermented sugar water, you're going to need to filter that material to get out any large particles and you'll use this coffee pot strainer. Make sure you rinse off the outside of the distilling pot and dry it before you put it on the hot plate. Now you need two clamps on a ring stand. You can use two separate ring stands or only one. You're going to set up the distilling pot so it's perfectly vertical on the hot plate. And the receiving flask will go on a second clamp or in a second clamp that's below the first. Then you're going to get your distilling apparatus, the distilling head and condenser. Connect the two water hoses for the condenser. Be very gentle with the glassware. It's very easy to break this stuff and you can cut yourself very badly. So that's how you're going to set it up. The one on the left there is the one that's going to connect to the water faucet. The one I'm pointing to now is what is going to go to the drain. Now it's important to have a little bit of grease put on the ground glass joints where the connected distilling head and condenser connect to the distilling and receiving pots. This will keep the ground glass joints from sticking together when things heat up and cool down. It only requires a very small, thin layer of grease. And this is how the distilling head and condenser connect to these two containers, these two flasks. You need to be very gentle again with all this glassware. So I've connected the distilling head to the distilling pot or flask and now I've connected the receiving flask to the end of the condenser. We need a couple of boiling stones now to add to the distillation flask or pot. Those are boiling stones in my hand there. We're going to put those into the fermented sugar water so that when it boils, it boils gently without splashing around a lot. Now we need to get out a temperature probe. That's the temperature probe we're going to be using. And that's going to be inserted into a number two stopper with a single hole. You only need about two centimeters or three centimeters sticking through the bottom of the stopper and that's going to be placed in the top of the distilling head. Then the cable from the temperature probe is going to be strung around the ring stand 
and connected to the LabQuest unit. Turn it on there with that round button. Insert the USB cable. Insert the power plug. Plug the power cord into the wall. Now the water hose that connects to the lower part of the condenser is what's going to be connected to the faucet. So the hose is going to be connected to the faucet so the water actually runs out of the faucet and into the condenser. Now the upper end of the condenser has a hose attached to it, but that's the drain hose. That's simply going to be put down into the sink. So let's turn the water on now. And you can see the water running through the lines, through the condenser, and draining out into the sink. We need to make a kind of collar to go on the bottom of the distilling pot, so we're going to use some tin foil or aluminum foil more correctly. We're going to fold that once, twice, and a third time. And kind of wad it up a bit and just kind of wrap it around the bottom of the distilling flask. So the distilling flask or the distilling pot heats up evenly. We're ready to turn on the hot plate. So plug it in. Turn it all the way up to the distilling pot it very carefully to overboil. When it begins to boil, watch the temperature. When it begins to boil, you want to turn it down to about one or two. You don't want it to go too fast. We're going to monitor that temperature very carefully. We don't want it to get up above about 95 degrees. So now you can see that the distilling pot or distilling flask has material in it that's boiling very gently. That's what we want. We're about to get to the temperature we want, about 90 degrees or so. If we get too much hotter than that, it's going to boil way too fast. And we're beginning to get some distillate in the receiving pot or the receiving flask. This is about what you want, a very gentle boil. Now once we've gotten enough distillate in the receiving pot, we want to start getting ready to determine the density. So we're going to place a graduated cylinder on the balance and zero it out. And then we're going to take the distillate in the receiving flask and remove that from the apparatus. Now be very, very careful with the glassware. It's easy to break. It's not required that you have a lot of distillate to determine the density. So we're going to place the distillate now in the graduated cylinder so that we can determine so that we can determine the mass and the volume to calculate the density. Now be sure to record every measurement you make. And when you're determining volume in a graduated cylinder like this, you want to make sure you're reading the meniscus and estimating the last digit. You can use this card to help see where the meniscus is. Recording everything that you measure in the lab is very important. Uh, you're going to have to have the mass and the volume of all your solutions. You want to know exactly how much ethanol and exactly how much water you put into your mixtures because we're going to be determining density and density is the mass divided by the volume. So in this case we determined mass to be 9.5 grams and the volume to be 10.0 milliliters for the distillate that was recovered here. To determine the molar concentration of your distillate, you're going to have to create a calibration curve. 
So we're going to set our graduated cylinder on the balance and zero it out. We're going to measure out amounts of water. In this case, I want to be measuring 9 milliliters of distilled water. But I want to make sure I measure it very carefully. Record all the measurements for the amount of water and ethanol solution you're using. In this case, I've been very careful to make sure I have 9.0. And now we're going to measure out the mass. So we're going to add to that now one milliliter of ethanol. And we add that to the mixture. We've got a 9 to 1 ratio, water to ethanol, that weighs 9.64 grams. The volume, however, when you add the 9.0 and the 1.0 is going to be 10 milliliters. So we've got a mass of 9.64 and a volume of 10 milliliters to determine the density of this solution, which is only one of about 11 that you're going to calculate for your calibration curve. The calibration curve, in turn, will be used to determine what the molar concentration of your distillate is. Now, I've recommended that you use these ratios for your calibration curve. And you need to watch the video on YouTube called Distillation Post Lab to figure out how to put together that calibration curve and determine through that calibration curve what the molar concentration of the distillate is. So once the lab is finished, you need to clean up. Wash out the flasks very carefully. Don't leave any of that mixture in the distilling or receiving flask. Dry everything off and put it away. Make sure that all the cables have been wound up neatly so they don't form a big rat's nest of intertangled cables. When you put away the balance, make sure you turn it off first before you unplug it. And then once it's unplugged, make sure you wrap the cables neatly again before you put it away. Now there's no reason to throw away the aluminum foil we'll use for our collar, so let's make sure we put it away with our distilling apparatus. And let's make sure to refill the graduated cylinders with distilled water and cover them tightly with parafilms. 